Now you notice with the room in the previous video, our character was able to kill the enemy, but I want to create something called an enemy spawner, which will cause the enemies to continuously appear as though they're, you know, coming in from an area, and then obviously the enemy code will kick in where he's going to follow and try and kill me. And sorry, please ignore that. As a book fell over, too many books here. So, yes, so now we've got create the enemy spawner. So we're going to create this as an object. So we're going to go to resources, create object. Very much like the player parents, except this one's going to be doing something. So I'm going to call this one. N me spawner enemy spawner and this one we're gonna set it not gonna have any sprites in it because we're not really going to see it so I'm gonna click add and here we're gonna go to step step and we're gonna say every step of the way it's going to check and see what's you know as the game's running but I want to set up a chance so let's go control here we go we've got this little die subject here which is test chance and it's going to have 50 sides okay so one out of 50 and it's going to spawn the enemy so now I want it to be able to create our enemy so now we want to create, create our character, so we're going to click on main one and go create instance. So it's going to create the enemy. So it's going to create on itself, apply to self. So object will be the enemy. And the X position. Now this is going to be tricky because I am going to set up a bit of code here. We're going to get it to follow. Well, the way it's going to work is that our play is going to move across the screen but we don't want it to be set in a specific place because our character is going to be continuously moving forward we want the enemies to come at him constantly so I'm going to set this X position to player underscore parent just like we've got it spelt over here and this time it's going to be dot x and I'm going to add 320 so what's going to happen we've got, let's imagine we've got a player in the center of the screen he's constantly moving forward our spawner is going to spawn enemies 30 or oh, 320 points ahead of our player so all the way to the right side off the screen so it's going to play that the enemies are going to constantly come in so as our player moves forward the enemies are going to continually spot off the screen because it's following the X position. If I just set this to 320 it will be at 320 no matter where the character is, is that position is not going to change. This allows the position to move relevant to our player's parent. Okay so I hope I explained that. As I say it's quite complicated but Hopefully it's not too bad. The Y, the Y can be a nice happy 30. There we go. And click relative because it's always going to change. The player's parent is changing. So that's ever changing. So go OK. And that's it. That's all you need to do with the enemy spawner. So that should all work. So if I test this out. So, oh, we've got this guy over here, so I'm going to fight you. Let's wait a moment. Oh, I just realised that probably our enemy, we haven't got any blocks outside the room, so I'm guessing the enemy. So if I move my character over here, oh, my character's fallen off the screen, so that doesn't really work. So let's make a few adjustments to the room. Let's see now. Settings, width, let's make this 1000. So I've got a bit more to play with here, which is handy. So, objects, that's uh, not the enemy spawner, we want the floor. You don't have to do this, this is just for testing purposes, just so I can make sure this is all working. So, I'm actually going to get rid of him, don't need him anymore. Click OK, test. Let's 
to be my character over here. So there should be an enemy spawning. Oh, I just realized why this isn't working. I haven't put the enemy spawner in the room. So that's my mistake. That's the only spawn I could pop it. Um, move you down to the ground. Let's try that one more time. Hopefully this should work. There we go. So we've got the enemies spawning. You can see one in 50. So I'm going to hit you. And you can see it's moving relative. My, if I keep my character still, you can see it happens way over here. So if I move my character forward, just a wee bit last I beat. Yeah, there we go. So they're spawning a little bit outside the room there. So there we go. So yeah, that is working after a few mistakes by myself there. So it's working. They've got a nice score of 1,000. Oop, let's get a bigger score. There we go. So, so yep, that is all working. So nice test there. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to set up a controller which is going to call up the score, time, and also it's going to display the health bar. So that's all pretty cool. So just like the enemy spawner, we're going to create a new object and I'm going to call this one controller and again we're not going to have any sprites in here, it's not going to have anything and I'm going to go to add event, create and this time we're going to have a tiny tiny bit of code sometimes in Game Maker you can bring in code to do things like to follow the cursor etc but this one's going to be relatively simple so Extra, where is it? Draw, no, where are we? Score, no, Contr ah, control. Obviously, controller. So, we've got this code. So, execute code, execute script. No, we just want code. So, I'm going to call this up and we get this lovely window here. So, the code is going to be time is, sorry, checking my notes here, is equal to 120. So, I'm going to set my time up as 120 seconds. And that's it. You click OK. That's the code. That's all. Very simple. And now we're going to set an alarm. So where's my alarm? This is going to deal with time. So score extra. Where is time? Time variables code. Other questions made to. Ah, here we go. Timing. So we're going to set an alarm. And number of steps. That is going to be 120. So that's setting the time as 120 and alarm to zero because we are going to come up an alarm later. So click OK. And there we go. So we're going to set all that up. So add an event. And this time we're going to draw. So we're going to draw in. So what draw does is imagine a pencil just coming in and drawing in the score in this section. It's going to draw the health bar and it's going to appear there. So this calls them up and puts them into the game. So we're going to set the color of this one. So I'm going to go to the X, where is it? Draw. And let's draw sprites, draw background. Where's, ah, here we go. It's setting set color. So I'm going to set the color for my, I think my, uh, my timer. So I'm going to set the color to white. Okay. No. Okay. And okay. So set the color. Is that it? I'm not sure. Let's try that color. Yeah, there we go. So I want the white. So it's a bit odd sometimes when you don't know what color is what. So yeah, we've made sure it's set to white. And we're going to do something called draw the score. So let's see. Set font. Uh, where's it draw score? Um, oh, probably in score. And yep, we want... Uh, there it is, draw score. So here we're going to set up, just move this to the side a little bit here, we are going to set up a score, again we're going to be using the player's positioning, so we're going to do x is equal to, make sure I get this right, player underscore parent dot x, and it's going to be minus 100, so it's going to be behind our character. The Y is going to be 20, and the caption is just going to read score. So there you go, that's all done. 
and we're also going to have a go at putting in the health bar as well. So that's going to be relatively easy. So we're going to go to, where is it? Oh, here it is. Health bar. How handy. <laughs> so draw a health bar. As you can see, this one's got a lot more fields to it. So we're going to set the first X. Well, the one X is, you know, its position perhaps over you know, side here and the X2 is the end of the bar and of course the Y is the top and the Y2 is the bottom so it creates that rectangular shape or square if you want to do square so but I want mine as a rectangle so again this one the health bar is going to appear on the screen but it's going to follow our player as he moves along so again this is going to be player oop, may that capital P player underscore parent and this one is going to be dot x plus 300 so he's going to appear on the more on the right hand side it's y is just going to be a simple 10 as x2 I'm just going to copy this section here y type it out when I can just copy it but this time it's going to be 200 and it's why here's going to be 34. The back color is, I'm going to set that to, I think, red. I think there's a nice word, red. Ah, there is. Red. And bar color is going to be, where is it? Lime. And there we go. And another thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to set a color to red. So this is going to set next variable which is going to be time so if we go to draw and skeleton settings here color and this time we're going to have a nice red okay it's a nice red color there it's okay so we've got setting it as a red color and this time we're going to draw a variable so i'm going to find my ah here we go controller variable so i'm going to draw a variable and this time the var is going to be time and again we're going to use the players exposition can I paste yeah I can play paste that's handy so this is going to be minus 300 oh minus 300 and the y is going to be 20 and we're going to tick relevant on so okay right so now I'm going to put this all up and test it out let's just see okay oh before we do anything we've got to go into room got controller and I'm gonna put it at the top here this time because we don't need to do anywhere else and click OK. So let's see if it's actually executing. So yep there we go we've got my score. So let's have a look and see yeah I'm punching away and uh, ooh bit of a glitch there. <laughs> you may get that sometimes so I'm punching away. So punch 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 and you can see there that my score is increasing here uh, well here's my score and we've got my health bar which is set to a nice lime green you can see it's moving as my character's moving so that can be quite handy a bit later on so punch 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 so there you go and yep the score is correct so that's all working <laughs>